Today we're going to go over one of my favorite topics, which is tricky algebra. <clears throat> we're going to do a series of videos. We're going to cover several things, but the idea is we're going to extend all of our skills from basic algebra, expanding and factoring quadratic equations, and these look kind of complex, and we're going to develop them into these tricky other problems. Now, part one will be about symmetry. So let, let's take a look at some of these problems. Number one, so there's many ways you might try to do this. The first way, which will already work, would be substitution. So we could take this and substitute, let's say, for x. So we could say, we could move the y over and then use this and plug that in, say, over here. And then we can keep substituting things in and that will eventually work but it's not very nice. So since today's topic is symmetry, what's symmetric about this? The, the thing that's symmetric is that there are two of everything. There's two X's, two Y's, and two Z's. So that's a clue. That means if we were to add all these equations, we would get two X plus two Y plus two Z equals six. So I think of this as sort of the master equation or maybe kind of like a lock and key these aren't technical terms these are just my terms so why is this so useful for us because now we can divide everything by 2 and we can get x plus y plus z equals 3 so just like a lock and key this is our master equation and if we combine this with any one of these we'll pop out whatever we want to know. So for example, combine this with the first one. Here we have x, y, and z. Here we have only x and y. So if we subtract them, we're going to find out what z is, which is 3 minus 1. So z would be 2. If we combine this with this one, so we take the master equation, subtract this one, we're left with just an x. So the x would be 3 minus 2 or 1. Subtract this, take this, subtract this one, we're left with just y because this has x, y, z, only x and z. So y would be zero. So from here we could find all our letters. So if we want to find, let's say, x, you go to the one that doesn't have the x. So x is one and y is zero. Now you can plug these back in and check that they work. Also, some of you may have just guessed these values. The point of this was to keep the numbers easy, but to demonstrate this technique. So if you guess the values faster than what we've done, that wasn't the point of the question. So just learn this anyway. All right. Now let's try another example. So using the same idea, a lot of you might start to get a sense of, oh, this is symmetric. There's two X's, two Y's, two Z's. So that's a hint that there might be a trick to the problem. Oh, but th this stupid face here is stupid because tricky algebra will blow your mind. All right. So you might think let's add all the equations. That's not a bad idea if you tried adding them you're already doing the right sort of thing, except we want to think analogously, meaning here we added them because these were pluses. Here these are times, so what do we want to do? That's right, we want to multiply everything. So there will be x squared from the two x's, y squared, z squared equals 36. All right, now what do we do from here? We can take this, now just to make this a little easier, let's say we're assuming they're all positive. If we take the square root of both sides, we get 6. The reason I did this little condition is that otherwise we have to consider the case where this is plus or minus 6, and that's, that's not the point of this problem. All right, so then we get the master equation again. We take these three letters, combine it with any of the others, except now we're not subtracting like we did in this one, but we're going to divide so x, y, z divided by, let's say, x and y, and out pops the z. That's why I'm calling a lock and key. And z is going to be 3. So by combining these, we get z is 3. Combine this with this one. That doesn't have an x, so this will get, a, get us an x. That will be a 2, 6 divided by 3. And this divided by that one, you get y equals 1. All right. So here's the, the point. When you see these problems, you may already know how to do them. So just by substitution, you could say x equals 2 divided by y, substitute that into here, get some other equation. You'll 
get stuff and if you know quadratic equations from the previous videos, you might even be able to solve it uh, using other techniques that we've already discussed. But you're missing the whole point, which is the beauty and elegance of these tricky solutions. So it's not, it's not just about do you get the correct answer, it's do you get the correct answer efficiently and elegantly. So we can almost do these problems in our heads if we use these tricky approaches. All right, and, and also, these approaches are more similar to the combination technique than to substitution. It's kind of like a tricky or advanced combination because we're combining all the equations in a specific way. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.